everybody. My name is Roisin and I am a writer and a storyteller. Storytelling is one of my favourite things to do. And I used to go into the library in Limerick to tell stories and I loved it. And I loved meeting all the children who came to tell the stories and their mums and their dads and sometimes their grannies or granddads as well. I can't do that at the moment. So I'm in the library, but I'm in a special room, and I'm doing a story video instead. So you can watch it wherever you want to watch it, and we'll all be very safe. And hopefully, hopefully, we'll be able to do story time in the library again, when everything is fixed. So I hope you're happy, and I hope you're safe, and I hope you're um, doing good stuff at home, and, and with your friends at school. So I'm going to start by telling you a story, and I'm going to draw pictures. I don't have a book for this story, so I'm going to do the pictures on this board. Now, if you've come to the library before, you know all about this board, and you know that I do the pictures, and you know that I'm not a very good drawer, and you know that you're not allowed to laugh at my drawing. But of course, now, you can laugh if you want, because I won't see you, because my drawings won't be very good. I'm just telling you now. They won't be very good. I do my best, I always do my best, but I'm not really an artist. I'm not a good drawer. Anyway, this is a story that I love. It's one of my favorite stories ever, and I often tell it. So if you've heard it before, I hope you don't mind hearing it again. It's a funny story, and it's also a very silly story, and they're my favorite kind of stories. And it's called The Elephant and the Bad Baby. And this is how it goes. You can guess what this animal is now, because I kind of told you. He has a trunk in the front, and a tusk, and another tusk at the other side that you can't see, a little eye, and an ear, and big legs like that. And remember, I'm drawing upside down, so it's very tricky. There's his other leg, you can just see a little bit, and his toe. I think they must be his toes, I'm not sure. Once upon a time there was an elephant. And one day the elephant met a bad baby. And the elephant said to the bad baby, Would you like to come for a ride on my back? And the bad baby said, Yes! In his baby voice. So the elephant put down his trunk, and the bad baby climbed up and up and up and up and up and up and up until he was sitting up high on the elephant's back. There's my baby. He just had his nappy on. And he was delighted with himself. And the elephant started to run. And the elephant went rumpata, rumpata, rumpata. See those lines? They start to show you that the elephant is moving. And he was very fast. Elephants can run really fast because they're so big. He went rumpata, rumpata, rumpata all down the road. And they came to a sweet shop. Let's do a little bit of a sweet shop here. There's the door. And there was a shelf in the window. Here's the window. And the elephant said to the bad baby, would you like something from the shop? So they looked in the window. The bad baby said, yes. So they looked in the window, and on the shelf, there was a jar. And in the jar, there were lots of lollipops. And the elephant said, would you like a lollipop? And the bad baby said, yes. So the elephant stretched out his trunk, and he put it in the door of the shop, like this, look, say, pretend this is his trunk, in the door, and then he went around behind the door, and he went to the shelf, and he grabbed a lollipop from the jar. Let's take that away. And he gave it to the bad baby. He took the lollipop from the shop. It wasn't a very good thing to do, was it? And he went rumpata, rumpata, rumpata down the road. But now there was someone following him. Come back here, 
dare! How dare you take that life up? Come back here this minute! Who do you think was following the elephant? Very cross. Yes, it was the shopkeeper. And he was so cross because the elephant should not have taken that lollipop. Imagine if you went into a shop and just took a lollipop and went out without paying. You would be in big trouble. So the elephant was in big trouble, but he didn't care. He just kept running. Rumpeta, rumpeta, rumpeta. We'd make the door a little bit bigger. I think it was a bit smaller. Let's make a big door there. They came to the next shop. And the next shop was an ice cream shop. And in the ice cream shop was a big freezer. Let's put it here beside the door. There's the handle. And in the freezer, of course, the elephant knew there were lots and lots of ice creams. And he said to the bad baby, Would you like an ice cream? And the bad baby said, Yes! So the elephant stretched out his trunk again, in the door, over to the freezer, he was able to open the freezer door like that. And then he put in his trunk again and he went into one of the boxes. because There were lots of boxes with ice creams in them. And he took out an ice cream. It was a coronetto. And he gave it to the bad baby. Can you see it? It's a bit small, but maybe you can see it. And they went rumpeta, rumpeta, rumpeta down the road. But now, there were two cross people following them. Come back here, how dare you take that ice cream? Come back here this minute. Who was this man? He was, of course, the ice cream shop owner. And they were very cross. But they couldn't catch the elephant, because elephants are very, very fast. They came to the last shop on the road. And it wasn't a sweet shop. And it wasn't an ice cream shop. It was a fruit shop. And in the window was a shelf. And in the shelf, on the shelf, was a bowl. And in the bowl were bananas. I'm not very good at drawing bananas, so I'll do my best. And the elephant said to the bad baby, Would you like a banana? And the bad baby said, yes! So the elephant stretched out his trunk, you know the next bit, went in the door, over to the bowl, took a banana and gave it to the bad baby. Oh, he was so bold, that elephant. And they went rumpeta, rumpeta, rumpeta down the road with now, how many people running after? Three people. And the last shopkeeper was a lady. She was the fruit shop lady. And her name was Barbara. She was very cross. Barbara didn't like anybody who took stuff without paying for it. And she was running after saying, Come back here! Come back here! How dare you take that banana! Come back here this minute! But they couldn't catch the elephant because he was too fast. He went rumpeta, rumpeta, rumpeta down the road. But there were no more shops. And soon there was no more road. They came to the end of the road. And the elephant had to stop because he couldn't go any further. So he stopped like this. It was like he was putting on his brakes with his foot. And he stopped. But he stopped so quickly that the bad baby went sliding along his back to his, the front of his head and he went sliding down the trunk just like a playground slide and he made this noise when he was going down and he landed on the road now, he wasn't hurt because he had his nappy on and he landed on his nappy, it was like a cushion so he was sitting on the road, but it, he dropped all the stuff that was in his hands. What did he have again? Oh yes, he had a lollipop. Let's put it here on the road. And he had an ice cream. Let's put it here. And he had a banana. Let's put it here. 
And they went tumbling around the road and they had to leave them because they got all dirty. And the bad baby was sitting on the road wondering what was going to happen next. And the elephant looked down at the bad baby and the elephant got a bit cross. And this is a very important part of the story, so listen really carefully. The elephant said to the bad baby, but you never said please. <gasps> that was why he was a bad baby. He had no manners. Do you remember when the elephant said, would you like a lollipop? What did the baby say? Yes. Did he say please? No, he did not. Did he say thank you when he got the lollipop? No, he did not. And the same when he got the ice cream and the same when he got the banana. He had no manners. And when the shopkeepers heard that, they were shocked. What? He never said please. And their mouths went wide like that. He never said please. And they were all looking at the baby and they were very cross with the baby now. First they were cross with the elephant, now they were cross with the baby. And the baby looked up and he saw all the cross faces looking down at him. And do you know what he said? This is another very important part of the story. He said, please take me home. He said please for the first time in his life. He said please. So when the elephant heard him saying please, the elephant stopped being cross. He didn't need his cross eyebrow anymore. He picked up the bad baby. We'll take away all the stuff from the road. He picked up the bad baby with his trunk and he put him back on his back. Baby was delighted to be back up. And the elephant turned around and he went rumpeter, rumpeter, rumpeter back the way he came back that way. And the shopkeepers, who still were looking for their money for the stuff that the elephant took, turned around and they were chasing him the other way. Come back here, come back, you never paid, you never paid for that banana and that lollipop and that ice cream. But they couldn't catch him because he was too quick. And the elephant passed all the shops again, the ice cream shop, the fruit shop, the sweet shop, and he kept going until he came to a house. Rumpata, rumpata, rumpata. And in the door of the house there was a lady this lady was looking very, very worried. And she was saying, where did he go? Where is he? Oh, I can't find him. Who do you think that lady was? Yes, she was the bad baby's mother. And she was in the garden with the baby before the elephant came. And then she heard her phone ringing in the kitchen. And she said to the baby, I'll be out in a second. And she was out in a second, but the baby was gone. Because the elephant came and said, would you like to come for a ride on my back? So she was looking up and down the road and very worried and saying, where is he? Where is he? Where's my baby? And then she heard, rumpata, rumpata, rumpata. And she saw the elephant coming. And she was so happy. <gasps> There's my baby. She was so delighted to see him back. She didn't mind that he was gone on the back of an elephant. She was just happy to have him back. So the elephant let the baby slide down his trunk because he knew he'd want to get off again because he was home with his mum. And he went sliding down. And he landed on the ground. There's his little curl. Landed on the ground and he said to his mum, 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 mum. She got a big blanket like that and she put it down on the, on the grass and the shopkeepers went and they sat on the grass. I won't change them now because it would take too long but we'll just give them happy faces because they were hungry and they were happy to get something to eat. 
So they all sat down and had their picnic. The elephant sat down on the blanket and had his picnic with the baby. I told you this was a very silly story. And mum brought out lots of lovely things. She made some sandwiches very quickly and then she had some jelly in the fridge and she brought that out. And then she had some biscuits and she opened up those biscuits and they had a lovely picnic. And then at the end, the shopkeepers went to the mum and they had a little whisper and they said, banana, ice cream, lollipop, no money, just took them. And the mum got an awful shock. Oh no, she said. Oh, that's terrible. Sorry about that. Oh, he's a bold elephant. And she went in and she got her purse. And she gave them the money. And they said, thank you very much because they had great manners. And they all went back to their shops. And then the elephant said to the baby, who was now a very good baby, because he knew his manners. Would you like to come for another ride on my back another day? And the baby said, yes, and thank you for today. It was lovely. He said, thank you. So the elephant went off, rumpata, rumpata, rumpata. And then the baby said to the mom, mom, please, will you put me to bed now? Because I'm very tired. And she was so happy to hear him saying please and thank you. She was delighted. And she brought him in and put him to bed and they all lived happily ever after. That's always a good ending to a story, isn't it? They all lived happily ever after. I love those stories where everyone always lives happily ever after. The elephant lived happily ever after. The baby lived happily ever after, the mum lived happily ever after, and the shopkeepers all lived happily ever after. And the elephant didn't take stuff from shops anymore, because he learned his lesson. He knew it wasn't good to do that, really. But he wasn't really a bad elephant. He just didn't have any money. But you can't take stuff if you don't have money. Sure you can't. Anyway, I'm going to do a song. I'm going to do a song about this guy. Now, you can see that this is a bumblebee. And you can see that it's a special bumblebee because he has a thing in his mouth. What do, what do small people have in their mouths? Yeah, it's a dodie or a soother. Some people call it a dodie and some people call it a soother. And you might even call it something different. But it's a thing for babies, isn't it? So this is a baby bumblebee. And it's a song about a baby bumblebee. And it's a song about something that you should never do, actually. Very silly. Because this little boy did it one day. He saw a baby bumblebee and he wanted to catch him. So he caught him in his hands like that. And this is what happened. I'm bringing home a baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm bringing home a baby bumblebee. Ouch! It stung me! I'm squishing up my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm squishing up my baby bumblebee. Ugh, it's icky. I'm licking off my baby bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm licking off my baby bumblebee. Ugh, it's yucky. I'm spitting out my baby Bumblebee, won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm spitting out my baby, Bumblebee. Ooh, it's messy. I'm sweeping up my baby, Bumblebee. Won't my mommy be so proud of me? I'm sweeping up my baby, Bumblebee. Now my mommy won't be mad at me. Don't ever, ever, ever catch a bumblebee in your hands. Because what will he do? Of course he'll sting you. Because he'll be really scared in there. He'll think he's in a, a, a cave or something. And he'll think a monster is coming to get him. So he'll do the only thing he can do, and that's sting you. And then you're going to be in trouble if you get a bee sting. So never, if you see a bumblebee in the garden, just give him a little wave and let him go about his business. Let him go and see if he can find pollen in the flowers to make honey.
I love honey. Do you love honey? I love honey. I have one last thing to do. And this is a poem. Now this is a very famous poem about an owl and a pussy cat. And there's a pig and there's another animal that you'll see when, we, when I turn the page. This is a very silly poem, very funny silly poem, and I love it. And it's a very, very famous poem by a man called Edward Lear. He wrote loads and loads of poems for children. And this is his most famous one. And people all over the world know this poem. And it's called The Owl and the Pussycat. And maybe you know it. Anyway, it goes like this. Now, the owl has a guitar, which is very silly. When did you ever see an owl with a guitar? And also, there's a jar of honey and they're in a boat. And the boat is green. And it's pea green. It's the colour of, you know, peas that you have with your dinner. It's that colour green, so it's called a pea green boat. And the, the piggy, piggy wig has a ring at the end of his nose. And usually pigs don't have rings at the end of their noses, but this one does. And there's the, the moon in the sky. And the moon in the sky has glasses on. Very silly. And this is a bong tree. It's just a very funny kind of a tree called a bong tree. That's not a real tree at all. It's just a, a, a made, up, made up tree. And this is how this poem goes. The owl and the pussycat went to sea in a beautiful pea green boat. They took some honey and plenty of money wrapped up in a five pound note. The owl looked up at the stars above and sang to a small guitar. Oh lovely pussy, oh pussy my love, what a beautiful pussy you are, you are, you are. What a beautiful pussy you are. Pussy said to the owl, you elegant fowl, how charmingly sweet you sing. Oh, let us be married, too long we have tarried. But what shall we do for a ring? She was the lady and she wanted a ring if she was going to get married. So they sailed away for a year and a day to the land where the bong tree grows. And there in a wood, a piggy wig stood with a ring at the end of his nose, his nose, his nose. With a ring at the end of his nose. Dear pig, are you willing to sell for one shilling your ring? Said the piggy, I will. So they took it away and were married next day by the turkey who lives on the hill. They dined on mince and slices of quince, which they ate with a runcible spoon. And hand in hand, at the edge of the sand, they danced by the light of the moon, the moon, the moon. They danced by the light of the moon. And if you look very, very closely, you can see the island in there. Can you see it? And the piggy wig is standing on his island. And he's watching the wedding on the other island. And the turkey has just married them. It's so silly, isn't it? Imagine a turkey marrying an owl and a pussycat standing on a hill. And imagine an owl and a pussycat dancing on the sand by the light of the moon. But I think it's a wonderful, sweet little poem, and I love it. It's very nice. I have time for one more quick poem. Actually, some quick song. This is this is this song. Okay. I did these pictures too, but I spent a bit more time on them because I did them at home, and they're a little bit better, I think, than my whiteboard pictures. There's a little boy, and he's swinging on a swing. But what's the swing attached to? A star? Swinging on a star? Wow, let's see how that goes. Would you like to swing on a star? Carry moonbeams home in a jar and be better off than you are? Or would you rather be a mule? A 
A mule is an animal with long funny ears. He kicks up at anything he hears. His back is brawny, but his brain is weak. He's just plain foolish with a stubborn streak. And by the way, if you hate to go to school, you might grow up to be a mule. Or would you like to swing on a star? Carry moonbeams home in a jar and be better off than you are. Or would you rather be a pig? A pig is an animal with dirt on his face. His feet are a terrible disgrace. He's got no manners when he eats his food. He's fat and lazy and extremely rude. But if you don't give a feather or a fig, you might grow up to be a pig. Or would you like to swing on a star, carry moonbeams home in a jar, and be better off than you are? Or would you rather be a fish? A fish can't do anything but swim in a brook. He can't write his name or read a book. To fool the people is his only thought. And though he's slippery, he still gets caught. But then, if that sort of life is what you wish, you might grow up to be a fish. And all the monkeys aren't in the zoo. Every day you'll meet quite a few. So you see, it's all up to you. You could be better than you are. You could be swinging on a star. Which would you prefer? To be swinging on a star? I don't think you could swing on a star, but maybe when you're grown up, you might be able to. You'd be very high up, though. I think I'd be a little bit scared. But the message in the song is very good. It's really, if you do all your work when you're at school and do everything your teacher is asking you to do, and if you learn lots of stuff, then you can do anything you want when you leave school. You can be whatever you want to be, and you can do whatever makes you happy. And that is the message. I love that message, and I love that song. Would you like to swing on a star? I kind of would like to swing on a star. If it wasn't too dangerous. Maybe if you had a parachute, you might be able to do it. Anyway, that is the end of the story time, and I really hope you liked it. And um, see you again another time. Maybe see you in the library. Bye.